And so we know that the change begins with us and we pray to God that we are reflective and see that person in the mirror and make the change. God is preaching time and help me preach and help me believe what I preach and live the change that I wish to see in the world. In Jesus name we pray, amen. We live in a society and culture that is filled with symbols and brand images. A symbol is something that stands for or suggests something else by reason of relationship, association, convention, or accidental resemblance. A symbol is a visible sign of something invisible. Even if one is unable to read, one can easily recognize the symbol or brand image. For example, I'll never forget, even before my nephew Kelvin, who is now 32, was able to read, I remember driving him and his twin sister Hillary around my hometown, Kennett, Missouri. They were probably two years old at the time that this incident happened. And when Kelvin saw the golden arches, he yelled out, Nick Donalds, not McDonald's. He recognized the symbols of the golden arches and couldn't even say it correctly. But Kelvin knew that the golden arches represented his favorite meal at that time, and that was chicken nuggets. Can I teach? Classical social theorist George Herbert Mead believed that our thoughts, self-concept, and the wider community we live in are created through communication known as symbolic interaction. Me believe that language and symbols are essential tools in shaping human behavior and that individuals interpret symbols differently based on their social interactions. So when Marjorie Taylor Greene wore that red baseball cap and donning the colors red and white during the State of the Union address, without saying a word, she spoke volumes. When the women of the Democratic Caucus sat in the joint session of Congress assembly wearing white, they spoke loudly without saying a word about women's rights, body autonomy, and reproductive rights. When the first woman ever elected to the U.S. Senate from the state of Alabama, 42-year-old Senator Katie Britt, the optics of sitting in the kitchen to deliver the response to the State of the Union address spoke volumes without her saying a word that the kitchen is the only place a woman needs to be seen and heard symbolic interaction. Wearing a ring on the left hand ring finger in the geographical boundaries of the United States speaks loudly to those who have socially conditioned to see the ring finger on the left as being either engaged or married. Symbolic interactionism theory assumes that interactions happen in a social and cultural context where objects, people, and situations must be defined and characterized according to individuals' subjective meanings. People respond to elements of their environments according to the subjective meanings they attach to those elements. And meanings are being created and modified through social interaction involving symbolic communication with other people. This is why I need you to pray. Mead adds that the self a part of someone's personality involving self-awareness and self-image originates in social experience. Another American sociologist, Charles Horton Cooley, used the term looking glass self to convey the idea that a person's knowledge of, self, of their self-concept is largely determined by reaction of others around them. Other people act as a looking glass or mirror so they can judge ourselves or we can judge ourselves by looking in it. Well, the lyrical theologian named Michael Jackson put it this way. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself 
and make a change. How we think we appear to others, the mind is mental because the human mind is social. And things like social media have accentuated the looking glass self to a whole nother level. People spend so much time on getting followers and the insatiable need to be liked, go viral, reposted, and the damage can be irreparable with the social influences. Symbolic interaction, symbols and messages communicated are critical. Can I say it again? Symbols are everywhere. And some of you might be wearing one today. It's a medic alert pendant, which has engraved on the back one's chronic condition. Some who have diabetes wear this. Some with heart trouble wear this. Those who are struggling with epilepsy wear this, just to name a few. And if something happens and a person is wearing this medic alert symbol, or it may even be embossed on one's driver's license, they can easily be assisted for the medical emergency. One's life can be saved if one wears the medic alert. But there is something even deeper with the medic alert symbol. Ever wonder why there is a serpent on a pole with a cross in the background? Stay with me today. There is power in symbols and brand images. Well, in the ancient world, there was general respect for revulsion at and fear of serpents, most being assumed to be poisonous and therefore dangerous. The serpent thus came to be understood symbolically with both positive and negative connotations. In some ancient cultures, the serpent was associated with deity or gods and was depicted in statues and paintings with various roles in ancient mythological stories. Some even linked the serpent with the process of healing. As in the case of the Greek god Ascapolis. Ascapolis is the Greek physician, the son of Apollos. Asclepius is associated with his three daughters, Hygienia, Metatrine, and Panacea, which symbolizes the forces of cleanliness, which is Hygienia, Met Metrine, which is medicine, and panacea, or healing. Are you with me today? Well, remember in the creation story of the Genesis, the serpent got a bad rap because it became the villain associated with the darkness of sin and also the feminine attribute of God, wisdom, or colloquial known as Eve, forever got associated with this darkness of sin. How However, there are a few instances in the Bible that references the positive qualities associated with the serpents. There is the story of the bronze serpent that Moses made in the wilderness and that was believed to have healing powers. So journey with me to the text found in Numbers, the 21st chapter, verses 4 through 9. And here is the situation. The Hebrews had run out of patience with Moses and they had run out of patience with God. Imagine that. They were tired, they were hungry, and they were irritable. They were no longer willing to bear the pains and trials calmly or without complaint. The Hebrews had lost their steadfastness because times had gotten a little rough and tough. The Hebrews had lost patience. One of the gifts of the Spirit is patience and long suffering. We have to be able and willing to endure when times aren't so good. We have to be willing to suffer long to wait on the Lord to see what the end will be. For we know that the race is not given to the swift, but to the one who endures to the end. The Hebrews were once again traveling towards the promised land of Canaan by way of the wilderness. For 40 years they had lived in the wilderness, feasting on manna, drinking from the wellspring God had provided. For 40 years they were vagabonds, 
immigrants, nomads, homeless. It wasn't easy carrying all their belongings, walking down the Rio Grande. I mean, walking day in and day out through the hot, dry desert wilderness. I'm sure they had to battle sandstorms that would beat up on their brow like thorns. There is pain in the wilderness, but if we faint not, there is an oasis. But over and over again, we see that the Hebrews were quick to grumble, murmur, and complain. I declare if they had access to a telephone, heaven forbid, social media, they would be gossiping and hating up a storm. The Hebrews were hating on their leader, Biden, I mean Moses. They were blaming Biden, I mean Moses, for everything. You know how it is. It's much easier to blame somebody else for your situation. The co-worker made me cuss her out. The preacher made me quit going to church. It's the Biden-Harris administration the reason why there's a crisis at the border. First of all, the only crisis we got is you who are so caught up thinking that this land is your land when it belongs to God. It's Biden's fault the economy is raggedy when it ain't. He's just one feeble white man trying to make a systemic change in a system that has never gave a fat rat's patootie about anybody unless you're a corporate tycoon. The Hebrews in their natural mind you know, your mind can play tricks on you. The Hebrews in their mind thought that they were more content enslaved than on their way to the promised land. Folks thought the USA was a great again under an administration filled with criminals and playing these little games in a way of exerting testicular power. But all it does is make us look like boo-boo the fool when we should be galvanizing energy to eliminate economic inequalities, find cures to all kinds of cancers, make sure that folks have access to potable water, just like many folks in this nation who wish to be enslaved in a system that got your mind confused, thinking that billionaires have the interest of the working class at heart. Do this self-reflection for a minute. Please, the same story of the Hebrews who thought themselves much more content eating fat meat in Egypt and in bondage than from feasting on the word and promises of God. History does repeat itself. And God was kind to the Hebrews. Every time they cried out, God would answer their prayer request. But on this particular day of the journey, as recorded in Numbers, the 21st chapter, verses 4 through 9, the Hebrews began to lose patience. Yes, the Hebrews were in the wilderness for 40 years. How much longer should they wait on the Lord? 40 years is a long time. 40 years is a time of trial. 40 years is a time it takes for a new generation to come of age. 40 years, how many of you have passed 40 years can remember how difficult it was? 40 years, how much patience do we have? Can we endure? Well, the Hebrews lost their patience with God. They got tired. They were hungry and they were upset. Kind of like us today when we think it's us against the world. God saw that the Hebrews had forgotten God's kindness and God was filled with anger. You want to know what really makes God mad? Listen to this. God sent fiery snakes into the Hebrew camps. Why did God choose to use serpents? Well, the snake or the serpent is the one who opened up the door to sin. Watch this now. And the Hebrews were sinning against the God who had delivered them out of bondage. Want to know what makes God angry? The Hebrews sinned against God, not by committing murder or stealing or adultery. They sinned against God by complaining. When we complain, we open the door to sin because we get caught up in our stuff. We complain about everything. Woe is me. I don't have this. I can't afford that. We should have done this instead of that. I'm ailing. I'm tired. I ain't singing. I don't want to have anything to wear. Stop complaining. Complaining is a sin. And so God used the fiery serpent 
to let the Hebrews know that they had sinned against God, but hallelujah, God is so gracious. God is so loving. God is so kind that God gave those complaining, whining Hebrews another chance. God told Moses to hold up a bronze serpent and set it on a pole and it shall be to everyone who is bitten by the fiery serpent. When they look at it, when they look at the bronze serpent that is lifted up, hallelujah, they'll leave, live. So what does all this mean? I'm glad that you asked. Just like the serpent is the one who opened the door to sin in the Garden of Eden, this dead bronze serpent Moses set on a pole for those to look up and live. This dead serpent is a sign that the serpent that bit you, the serpent that made you complain, the serpent that caused sin is dead as a doornail. It has no power. The devil is powerless. Understand that God has handled the serpent. God can take care of the serpent no matter how the serpent person or personality presents itself. Know that God sometimes has us in the wilderness to test our patience so that we can look to God stretched out, lifted on a pole, and lived. Now, here is the theological significance of the serpent that Moses lifted on the pole so that all who are bitten by sin, if they would just look, they will live. There is a theological significance of Asclepius and the medical alert. There is healing for the sin sick. There is balm in Gilead. Beloved, for all of us who are bitten by sin, wounded by sin, inoculated with sin, poisonous venom if we would just look up to Jesus just as Moses lifted the serpent in the wilderness so was the son of God beloved don't complain or play a hate look at yourself what about you that you don't love there is enough for everyone and everybody there's plenty good room all over the world I don't have any better sense today than to believe that the the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, and those and they that dwell therein, and that God so loved the totality of the world that God created, that spans beyond the borders of the U.S. of us and our idiosyncratic, finite view of God bless America, God bless me and mine, shut the front door. If we keep trying to stop folks from entering, I am mighty afraid. That God will show us better than God will tell us. So don't fail the test by thinking that the kingdom of God is only limited to a select few. God created everybody and everything. And God is still no respecter of persons. The rain falls on the just and the unjust. The first will be last and the last will be first. The great reversal of God's nature helps us to not get confused or twisted or limited. God will mess you up just when you think you got it. God does something in your life and say, no, I'm the one that's got it. It be healed, saved, delivered through him. Jesus was lifted up on the pole on Calvary's cross for your sins and my sins. And here is a challenge and a reminder for us today. I'm going to make a change for once in my life. It's going to feel real good. Got to make a difference. Got to make it right. Uh, uh, that's why I want you to know that I'm starting with the man or the woman in the mirror and I'm asking him or her to change their ways and no message could have been any clearer. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and then make a change. Shout hallelujah today. There is healing.